Week two, simulation exercise one, you'll start with a pressure source. Use the library on the left to navigate through the pneumatic devices. You wanna make sure that you're in the pneumatic section here when you're picking a device. You can search for it, pressure source, and then you usually won't see it until you click on that area. If you do not see it right away, then you keep going down through the drop down arrows. Here's a pressure source. This next device is a filter regulator lubricator. It's a symbol that represents all three of those devices. So you type in FRL for filter regulator lubricator and go down the menu until you find it. Next, we have a throttle device. In pneumatics, flow valves, I don't see it yet, so I need to open it up further and see I have a fixed throttle and a variable throttle valve. The arrow through it means it's variable. If I wanna change position, I go to the edit menu, position, and I can rotate or flip horizontally or vertically. When I bring the two red dots together, they make a black dot showing a connection. It looks like I have another uh, variable throttle valve. If I hold control and select that device and drag away, I can make a copy. Can then rotate it again to face it down. And this next device on the end here, the arrow going out of the line is an exhaust port for our pneumatics. Pneumatics, exhaust, bring that in and place it on the dot. I need this directional control valve and I search for it by calling it a, how many ports? So three ports and two boxes. So three, two valve. So it's a three dash two way valve, directional valves. I have a normally closed and normally open. This one is normally closed because in its unactuated state, it's plugged. So I can go there and I may not see what I need immediately. So I can just pick one that's similar. So I'll grab this device and then I wanna orientate it like it's shown. So I'm gonna rotate it and then I'm gonna flip it on a vertical line. Now it doesn't have the exact setup that I need and if I double click on the device, I can open up this technical specifications section and I can change the boxes however I want. So on the spring return, I double click on that box and on that spring return side, I wanna plug in a straight arrow through. So I can come over here and find a plug and a straight arrow through. I have to hit the green check marks to make it stick open up this side and I want a plug with an arrow across. There's a plug with an arrow across. And then I don't want both of these, I want a push button. So let's click on this one and hit delete. Then let's double click on this solenoid and make it a push button. Hit the green check marks and then exit out this window and it looks now the same as my diagram. I can connect these red dots by dragging a line between them. And then I can connect here and I can click to change directions and connect there. I need this single acting cylinder. In my pneumatics, it's an actuator. I have a single acting cylinder, but here I don't see a spring. If I open it up further, I can get to more options. Single acting cylinder with spring return. And this one has the spring on the opposite side. So I want this one. Connect the dots. Now, if you have a cylinder, you can enter this design area and you look at the builder and you can remove that spring by clicking on the spring on the right side, or you can add a spring to one that does not have a spring and hit the green check mark to make it stick. Now that it's put together, all my connections are black and not red. I can hit play at the top and I can see the lines that are high pressure in red and low pressure in blue. 
you won't see lines where the image of the figure is. So like I have a throttle valve here. If I see a red line through there, that means the valve was bypassed or the, the connection goes through it. If I push this button, I have to hold it down for the spring return. And then when I let go, this spring should take over and retract the cylinder. The spring has a certain stiffness that you can set as well.